in this example, we want to analyze the following set of differential equations as a population model, plus for the equilibrium solutions and figure out what's going to happen over time to the situation. So the differential equation system here, dx dt is 3x minus xy, and dy dt is 2xy minus 4y. If we look at the different terms here, we see that we have a negative interaction term on the x side and a positive interaction term on the y side. So this means that we're dealing with a predator-prey model here, where x is the prey. So we expect to see either a spiral or a center at the equilibrium solution, and because we see no logistic term here, this is just a straight up population exponential growth model, we should see a center at that point. So let's see what happens. Let's classify the equilibrium solutions and see what we get for that. So if we want dxt to be zero, we see this can be factored as x times three minus y. So either it's x equals zero or y equals three. And since I want x to be positive, I'm gonna sort of ignore the zero one and look at the positive one. And for the y equation, for dy dt to be zero, this factors as 2y times x minus two. So we could have y equals zero, which I'm going to ignore, or x equals two. So what I want here is x is two and y is three. To classify this, let's find the Jacobian matrix. So the Jacobian matrix here is fx, fy, gx, and gy. To differentiate that first function there in x, I get three minus y. Which again, y, I just get negative x. For the y equation, differentiating in x, I just get 2y. Differentiating in y, I get 2x minus 4. If I plug in my point here, 2 comma 3, I'm going to get 3 minus 3 is 0, negative 2, 2y is 6, and 2x minus 4 is 0, which we then find the eigenvalues here. This is going to be 0 minus lambda times 0 minus lambda plus 12, which is lambda squared plus 12. So the eigenvalues are at plus or minus square root of minus 12, or i square root of 12. Which these are purely imaginary eigenvalues, so this will be a center like expected. Now because it's a center, the nonlinear system doesn't have to actually behave like a center, but we know that for predator-prey models of this case, it does actually behave like a center. So we know we're going to get continual oscillation over time for this population. So over time, we'll see these populations of x and y will continue to oscillate, sort of following each other around a cyclical path. And we can also analyze the same idea with a null Klein diagram, because our null Kleins here are x equals zero and y equals three for dx dt, and for dy dt they are y equals zero and x equals two. So the only solutions are the intersection point here and zero, zero. We're ignoring the zero, zero case, so we're looking up at the one in the first quadrant. If x equals two, we are along this line. So in that case, we know dy dt is zero. So our trajectory is either directly horizontal. Now, if y is bigger than three, then this three minus y term here is negative, so my entire rate of change is negative. So if I am above three, then my trajectory must be strictly to the left. And if I am below, the yt is still zero, but now three minus y is positive, so that's going to the right. The same idea happens if you look for along the x null lines. In that case, we have that y is three, so this term here is zero. If x is less than two, then this will be negative, so it's going down. And if x is bigger than two, it's positive, so we're going up. This means that we can sort of see the cycling trajectory that's happening for this dynamic. It doesn't specifically say it's going to be a center, but it's going to spiral in some capacity because of the picture that we see here. So that's how you can analyze this nonlinear system, figure out what the ecosystem looks like, as well as what type of model it fits, and see that both the null Klein approach and the normal approach give us the same idea of what's going to happen to solutions over time for these different populations.